Well, hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to my shop. So, got a paying job coming in the door. It's at my feet. Let me grab the camera, point it down, and show you what we got. So, what you're looking at is a brake drum. I normally don't do this kind of work for several reasons. One, it's messy and it's dirty and there's not much money in it. And two, you know, you can usually just buy a whole new replacement hub for about the price it'll cost you to turn it, you know. I've done some work for this customer before, so I'm gonna try to help him out because for him to uh, buy a replacement brake drum, this sucker is $400. Can you believe that? And this is off his uh, gooseneck trailer, so he's got obviously two axles, so he's got four of these. So, you know, $1,600 in brake drums, and then he said the brake shoes are some oddball too. So, I mean, you're looking at two grand just to do a brake job, so it's kind of nuts. So I'm gonna see if I can help him out. The problem that makes these things so expensive, uh, look at this, so. Uh, so the hub is integral with the actual brake drum itself. So that's why it's so expensive. So, you know, obviously they've machined the bore in there for the um, bearing races and everything. So, I mean, normally you can get the, you know, it's made separately. So you just, you know, swap out your drum bing bang boom so hopefully I can uh, just uh, you know clean it up and he can you know put it on his trailer he can get it all wrapped up and he said he's gonna sell it because he's like it doesn't make sense to uh, keep the trailer <laughs> and uh, have to spend that kind of money to do brake jobs he said if he would have known it was something like this he wouldn't even bought this trailer so let's see if we can't get this thing chucked up in the monarch you know this would be obviously simple turning and if this works for uh, for him then he's going to bring the other three and i won't film that you know so just a quick video for you guys this week and, you know this is what comes in the door so let's uh give this thing a shot well that was fun wrestling this thing up here i put it on the scale weighs 60 pounds so yeah those are some uh, serious drums and hubs there Bumped it around, got it dialed in pretty good, if you guys can see that. I mean, we're only moving a couple thou. It's a little bit rough in there. I cleaned the dirt and stuff off. So I think that'll be plenty good for inside drum for some shoes. I'm going to go ahead and close this up so no, uh, you know, cast iron dust gets in the bore there. Get the ways covered, get the boring bar set up, and we'll see what we can do. Running 48 RPM, about 8 thou per rev feed rate. Got a VNMG style insert in there. You can see the bungee cord I got wrapped around it, try to soften the ring. Right now, I'm just trying to get my zero here. We're getting close to almost cutting all the way around, as you can hear. Sorry, this ain't gonna be an exciting video. <laughs> but I guess this is just typical job shop work. You know, helping a guy out. through the crusty rusty part right there at the rim. We're almost cleaning up all the way around on this back section here. Looks like we'll have to do another five thou after we run this one through and we'll, it might be good.
Well, I think that's the final cut. Looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see these imperfections in the cast from there. Maybe let me move in on the. See that? Kind of looks like bubbles. <laughs> oh, not too bad. Um, end up taking 20 thou off the radius. 40 thou total. I think we should still be in spec. I'll get this thing out and we'll throw a caliper on it and we'll see. But, you know, he had nothing to lose. So that'll be good. Sure is messy though. Whew. All right, you ready? Pew. You gonna drop it? He's gonna drag it all the way over there. You gotta bring it over here, bud. Can't throw it from there. <laughs> all right, making me work today. This one's going to the garage door, okay? Pew! All right, time to see how we did. The inner diameter is larger than 12 inches. So finally got a chance to use my 24 inch vernier caliper. Bought this thing in 2015. After um, doing a job where I needed to measure 12 inches and I only had an eight inch caliper. So I bought a 12 inch dial caliper and I thought, well, if I ever get any more paid work that I need to precision measure larger, better invest in tooling, so, or measuring equipment, should I say. So I grabbed this from Shores back in 2015 and I just broke it out of the plastic. Still got a little bit of oil on it. So nine years later, I finally get to use it. So let's see how we're doing here. It says on the, uh, rim there the max you can go is 12 inches 340 thousandths so i think we're still well within that man i can't read these little lines getting older sucks let me go over to the workbench put a uh, optivisor on and see where we're at all righty so we are at 12 inches 289 thousandths so we're still good we're still well within the allowable limit here so happy with that like i said i took 20 thousandths off the radius so 40 thou total diameter cleaned up pretty good you just got a little bit of nicks around the rim or the should i say the edge of the rim but it won't matter because you know the brake shoes don't ride there happy with it i'm gonna go ahead and get the other three knocked out off camera no need to show you that. Um, I know this isn't a real exciting work here, but it's the stuff that comes in the door, pays the bills, you know, it keeps the locals happy, so they keep bringing me business. So I think it's a win for everybody. So I appreciate you hanging out with me in the shop. Welcome all my new subscribers. If you're uh, not a subscriber to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, moves me up in the algorithms. That way uh, people on YouTube can find my channel and watch my content. So until next time, we'll see you later, guys. Take care. Bye.